And so that's where they, they filmed and they shot everything. Mm -hmm. And yeah, no. And from there, like it was, it was a really interesting competition because it wasn't like a, I guess it wasn't like a traditional Miss Universe sort of thing. Um, and why they, I guess that's how they decided to do, to do things. So moving on from that, they produced a calendar and all the models that were finally selected were published in that calendar. Mm -hmm. And yeah, from there, um, the judge panel was, they had all their social media active. So they were promoting all the girls and the girls were promoting the page and, you know, were promoting the calendars so they could be sold. Mm -hmm. And within that time, they also, um, it was like a six to 12 month time frame. They were monitoring everyone, seeing how everyone's career pro progressed. And, um, I was doing a lot, like I was working a lot <laughs> as I, as I still am. So I was really putting myself out there and doing all these magazine shoots and, and so on. And they asked for anything like towards the, like the, the judging, they asked for anything like pretty much like a resume or like a breakdown down of everything that you did. So again, like I, I pretty much, um, organized everything together and I pretty much put down everything that I had done, all the magazines that I had done. I had done several covers for some small magazines by then as well. Mm -hmm. So I submitted all of that. And, um, from there, they, there was also public voting. So okay. people were voting for us as well. And, it was a combination of the judge panel and the voting that would determine who the winner would be. Okay. So, yeah, no, I, before they did the finale, um, of course, I got a phone call prior and, um, yeah, I got told that I won. <laughs> so I was really, like, really shocked. Yeah. I was just like, oh, my God, like, I thought maybe one of the other girls would have won and that I would have came second or something because I, I was kind of, like, really thinking I'd be close um, based on ev everything that I'd submitted mm -hmm. but um, and everything else that had happened. But, yeah, it was really interesting. Um, so I, I had won the competition. It was just – and it was really – it was just really amazing to have won that. Excellent. So then in 2018, you were on the cover of Playboy. So tell me more about that. How, what was it like working with the, with the Playboy brand in general? And how did, how were you selected to be on the cover? So prior to that, I had done, um, like six Playboy features. So I'd been featured in Playboy before, but okay. this, they just weren't covers. Mm -hmm. So my manager, he reached out once again to a photographer who worked very closely um, or very, yeah, they pre he pretty much worked for Playboy Croatia. And, um, yeah, so my the photographer and my, and my manager had arranged, pretty much reached out to Playboy Croatia to arrange a possible cover. And that ended up working out very well. And I think, or I would say it would have been a combination of things because by then I was very experienced. I had, a, I have a national title. Mm -hmm. I had a really good portfolio and social media presence. And I had been featured in Playboy before. I'd been featured in other magazines as well, like Maxim. So it was, um, I don't want to say it was easy, but it was, you know, there was a lot there that definitely backed me up in the end. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it was all arranged by my, by my management and the photographer, of course. So, um, yeah, I'm very grateful to have, um, a very good business partner. He's very, um, yeah, he's, he's very headstrong and he, and he's really, you know, good at arranging these sort of things. Yeah, it, it definitely sounds like it. So, you know, you've, you've been on 50 plus covers of magazines and you're winning awards and doing amazing things. Where do you see your career progressing in, in 2019 or beyond? Uh, especially since you, you know, you've just done a couple of acting gigs. So where do you want to take your career next? I definitely want it to 
Like, I, I do want to do more television, that's for sure. I wanted to do, because I figured, like, because another goal of mine is to be in, in a blockbuster film. I've always wanted to do that, like, be an A-list actress and, and do that. But mm-hmm. obviously, there's a road leading to that. You don't just, you know, end up there tomorrow. But right. um, I'm happy to work towards that, of course, because that's something that is very important to me. Mm-hmm. So I thought one stepping stone would be to go on TV because I think more, you know, television appearances can be, you know, bring out a lot of publicity as well. And you just gain a lot of experience and you have a lot of fun. So I definitely want to do, um, yeah, more television appearances. I also want to progress more in the magazine industry. So I would like to do more covers um, another goal of mine was always to cover for, um, do a cover for Maxim because mm-hmm. that's something that I think would be, yeah, very cool. So, yeah. So there's a lot of things I really want to do, but I did have a long think about these sort of things the, the past six months. And, um, despite, um, wanting to, or despite, yeah, despite wanting to continue within the Playboy and, and the whole glamour industry, I do really want to become, um, a successful actress. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I'm happy to work towards. Um, at the moment, I'm still at drama school part time to really, mm-hmm. you know, enhance my skills and, you know, so I know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And I'm taking on small projects for uh, yeah taking on small projects like the mini series they're doing um in a couple of weeks so i'm really thankful I'm, I'm very excited to be a part of that so i definitely want to yeah work towards it and i think that and a lot of people get this wrong but as much as the small projects don't ex- sound as exciting as the bigger ones you do still want to do the small ones because you know Every little bit counts. You kind of get more exposure that way as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking on a variety of projects and, um, yeah, I'm working towards that. Yeah. So if if somebody younger was listening to this podcast and they would like to be where you are and, and be a successful model, what advice would you give them that you wish someone had told you when you were first starting off about your career and, and making sure that you were safe? Um, you know what? I wish that someone had told me to always get the right support. And when I say that, I mean, because sometimes what happens is, especially when you see the people who are already successful, I mean, in this world, some people are more fortunate than others. So it Mm -hmm. makes sense. But in terms of just, and this is where someone may ask what what does she mean by support so when i say support i say a team of people who are really willing just as much as you mm-hmm. if not more to push you out there and make sure your career blooms because as much as i have my my management both in the states and in australia i felt that if i had more friends and more family that were just as passionate about my career as I am. And I I don't mean like they would like throw money in or, you know, do all these ridiculous things, Mm -hmm. but, you know, just be really supportive and really, um, you know, encourage me in a sense, you know what I mean? Then perhaps I'd be further than I am now. And that's the one thing I kind of felt that I could and I couldn't have controlled. Mm -hmm. But in saying that, I have a really good, um, circle of friends and family and my management that really care about me and care about my about my career but I just felt especially in the low times and we all have them you really need a good support system for your career because your career can often I don't want to say your career will go dramatically down but on the pathway to success there's going to be all sorts of things that happen all sorts all sorts of obstacles and that's that will happen no matter what industry you you decide to be in. So, mm-hmm. and if you don't have a good support group, um, 
you're going to find it more difficult during those challenging times. So to a young person, I would say, yes, get out there, do your very best, be passionate and driven about it. Um, if you really care about it, you will anyway. But find people or have people around you who think exactly the same mm -hmm. because um, as much as it sounds sad, but I think it happens to everyone. I can't tell you how many people that just kind of walked out or I kind of just had to, um, in a way, <laughs> um, delete because I felt they were more jealous of me than they were you know, proud of me. And I, I didn't really want that negativity around me. I just wanted people who, yeah, who were, who were real and that they, they cared. So that's something I would say to them. Yeah. In your own career and journey, what would you say has been the best advice that you've ever received? So the best advice that I ever received, and this would have been one of the first things I was told and this was like at the very beginning of, um, of my career. So I met with a basically a scouter and they said to me, if you're going to do something, do it right. And if you're not going to do it right or if you're not going to do it properly, don't do it at all. Mm -hmm. And that meant to me, well, in other words, everything that I do, um, I'm going to have to do 100%. And that helped because that meant – I mean, I really care about my career, but that ultimately meant that anything that I do was going to work out very well because I was putting in all all my effort. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, I wouldn't say that would mean that you're invincible to failure, but I would say that that sort of advice would mean that everything you do will at least – Depending, like if something went wrong, but of course that can still happen. But basically it meant that everything that you did would work out well anyway in the long run because you were putting in the effort and people will see that as well. People will see, oh, wow, she or he is a hardworking person. Mm -hmm. She will, They will really put in the effort. So um, it's a very interesting piece of advice, but I would highly recommend that. Um, because at the end of the day, you don't want to kind of half do something. Um, you don't want to appear someone who's lazy. You just want to be, you know, an, an honest and hardworking person. Yeah, well, that's wonderful. Thank you. So, Jasmine, thank you so much for, you know, for getting up early today and chatting with me. I really appreciate your time. Uh, if the listeners would like to see your work, and hear more about you, where is the best place they can go to do that? So I'm very active on social media. Mm -hmm. So if they look up Jasmine Shojai Model on Instagram and Facebook, they'll find me there. Um, they can find me on Twitter as well under Jasmine underscore Shojai. Mm -hmm. And I have my official website as well. So that's www.jasmineshojai.com. So there's a lot of content up there, and um, yeah, definitely feel free to check it out. Wonderful, and I will make sure that I put the the links in the show notes so they can click right through. No worries. Excellent. Well, again, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. No worries. Thank you. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Advance Your Art Podcast. If you like this episode, please go into iTunes and give us a five-star rating. And while you're there, hit the subscribe button so that every single time I release a new episode, it will go directly to you without even thinking about it. If you're interested in hearing older episodes, please go to AdvanceYourArt.com where you can find the catalog of everything I've done so far, as well as contact information and projects I'm working on. Thank you again, and have a great day.